We continue our journey around the vineyards of Occitanie and now we've arrived in Minervois, which is in the Languedoc, situated between the towns of Carcassonne and Narbonne, just north of the Canal de Midi and up to the Black Mountains. This is a large area of around 5,000 hectares, uh, an ancient Roman outpost named after the town of Minerve, or village of Minerve, I should say. Uh, it was also one of the last bastions uh, of the Qatars when the Crusades were sent out in 1210 by Simon de Montfort. It's a very varied region, 5,000 hectares, as I said, in size, almost like an amphitheater with the vineyards facing due south. They start at low altitude from the canal and gradually move up as you move into the Black Mountains, which are really part of the Cévennes. Over the years, there have been many attempts to segment the region into different subregions because there is quite a lot of variety, as you can imagine, within 5,000 hectares. The soil is predominantly clay limestone, but there are pockets of sandstone, red soils, chalk, particularly in the northern parts, and even some quartz and marble, which you find in the northwest part, very close to the region with Cabades. Here the climate is definitely Mediterranean. You can feel the warmth, the sun is often shining, uh, hours with somewhere between 2,500 and 2,800 of hours of sunshine a year, and rainfall also is quite modest. This is an appellation that is capable of producing all three styles of wine, red, white and rosé, but red is by far and away the most predominant style you will find, with Syrah forming the backbone of many of the red blends. So the wines tend to be quite ripe, opulent, quite, quite supple, uh, with tannins that are generally very ripe and quite easily approachable. Uh, and it can make wines everything from sort of entry point level up to some very high quality examples. Rosé is gaining in popularity but still doesn't have the same size of production as you find in other regions within the Languedoc and certainly in neighbouring Provence. Uh, and there's a small amount of white, which only accounts for 2% of the production, but is making some very, very interesting wines based on varieties such as Roussan, Marsan, Vermentino, Macabeo, Grenache Blanc. Instead of choosing a red wine, I thought what we'd do is we'd choose a white wine from this region. And we've chosen a wine from Chateau La Grave, which is located in the village of Badance, which is in the lower left-hand half, if you like, of the Minervois region, very close to the Canal du Midi. Uh, this is a family-owned uh, domain. A quite a similar story you find with many producers in that producers originally who used to sell grapes to the Carve Cooperative and then started making their own wine. So we will try uh, Chateau Le Grave. This has got a lovely complex array of aromas. There's everything from sort of lemon peel, some honeysuckle, some nice floral notes, a slight waxiness, and some of that white peach character, all going on in the same glass. This is a blend of many varieties with Macabeo, or if you were in Rioja, it would be called Viura, uh, as the main backbone of this wine. Uh, blended in with the Macabeo, you have varieties such as Roussan, some Bionnier, and there's even a small amount of Vermentino, uh, a variety that probably is quite famous in Corsica, but is now increasingly planted in the Languedoc. What you smell on the nose is what you get on the palate. You've got this lovely complex array of aromas and flavors, everything from these citrus to the stone fruit characters. You've got lovely acidity, uh, which may seem quite surprising from what is really quite a warm region in the Languedoc, but I think that's what the Macabeo brings, and I think also that's what the Vermentino brings to this wine. There's no oak, it's just all about the fruit, and there's less underlying, almost slightly chalky character coming from that you know, clay limestone soil you find right here. Really delicious wine. If we go to the northern part of the Minervois, we find uh, a separate appellation, a so-called cru appellation, called Minervois la Livinière. This is really located in the Black Mountains themselves, at altitude of about 250 to 300 meters, in one horizontal band at the northern end of the Minervois appellation. If you think of Grand Cru in Chablis, which is basically one horizontal band in the middle of the hill in Chablis, this is a similar thing we have here with the Appellation of Minervois La Livinière. This is an appellation for red wine only, 
and Syrah, like in the rest of the Minerva, forms the backbone of many of the blends and is complemented by varieties such as Grenache, Morel, uh, Carignan and occasionally some saint -Sain. Here, because of the altitude, it's a little bit cooler than the rest of the Minerva. When I say cooler, I mean one or two degrees, which doesn't sound very much, but over the term of a growing season could mean maybe harvesting up to two weeks later than in other parts of the Minerva. What this means in reality for the grapes is that they have longer hang time. They spend more time on the vine, so they tend to get an increased level of ripeness. And also you tend to get quite an even ripening between the fruits and the sugars and also the tannins. So the net result is you get wines that are full bodied, quite intense, uh, with firm yet quite supple tannins. Now these are wines that can be built for aging. The landscape here is beautiful. It's almost like you, the, the, the soil is meeting the sky. You have stone terraces, you have fig trees, you have almond trees, you have capitel, which are the ancient stone uh, like what, buildings which people used for shelter and also nowadays for keeping uh, vineyard material. And these are all dotted around the landscape with pockets of vines. Overlooking, uh, overlooking the vines is the village of Lalivinière itself which has a famous church with a minaret, which is often seen on the capsules of many of the labels. La Livinière, as I said, is the first of the Cru appellations. It was created in 1999 as the vision between two men, Maurizio Piccinini, who was the leader of the local craft cooperative at the time, and Roger Piquet, who was the owner of Chateau de Gorgazeur. And I'm sure if they could see what had been achieved now from their dream over 20 years ago, they will be absolutely thrilled. The second wine we're going to try is Chateau Maris La Livinière Les Armandiers. Les Armandiers means almond trees. And you find many of these almond trees growing throughout the La Livinière appellation, together with fig trees and olive trees and other types of fruit trees as well. It's very much a polyculture in this region. And this particular wine is named after a single vineyard which is surrounded by almond trees, hence the name of the cuvée Les Armandiers. Uh, it's made by an estate called Chateau Maris, uh, who are a biodynamic estate based just outside La Livinière in an extremely eco-friendly uh, winery that is built, that's insulated with hemp. I think it's one of the first biodegradable, completely 100% biodegradable wineries in the world. See the depth of the color of this wine, incredibly intense, uh, almost opaque, very sort of deep, purplish, ruby color. Wow, the nose is very explosive. Yeah. Everything from black cherry, mulberry, fig, lots of that lovely vanilla and fine grained toast. There's a touch of rosemary and thyme coming from the garrigue that grows all about and even a touch floral, maybe this almond blossom that is growing around the vineyard. I just want to dive in, there's so many different flavours going on in the nose here. It's rich, it's powerful, yet it's elegant and it has finesse. And I think this is one of the key attributes of La Livinière. You can get all this intensity, but there's also an element of restraint, which is coming from that slightly higher altitude and this slightly bigger diurnal shift, temperatures difference between day and night. The wine has immense concentration, lovely layers of complexity. The oak, and there's 16 months of new French oak in this wine, but it's not over-oaked. It's not over-oaking. It all goes with the intensity of the fruit. There's incredibly low yields in this wine, and you can sense that on the taste, and the finish is very, very long. Uh, this is a really delicious wine, and a wine worthy of the Cru La Livinière status.